Uh, for our next speaker, we have somebody who is uh, going to talk about one of my favorite topics, mathematics. <laughs> Go figure. That's a bad pun. Uh, please give a warm round of applause to Christian Corius. I just want to say Tere, but it's in English. Um, hello. My name is Christian. Uh, I was studying here in high school, and then I left to United Kingdom. I was studying near London. It's a nice country. You've got like free healthcare and so on. And I was young, first year bachelor student. And in one moment, we decided to do a test for STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. And um, a week later, I was working in a bar uh, with my computer. Uh, and uh, a call came, and it was it was my like first couple of months there, and my English wasn't good. I didn't understand it. There are loads of immigrants, so I didn't understand the phone call particularly well. Um, but basically, she said that my HIV test is not negative. Um, oh, you almost cannot see it. Um, and yeah, it was like a, it was rather not that good feeling. <laughs> we didn't know what to do. Um, we bought a pack of cigarettes. We smoked it. I smoked it. And um, was wandering around. Wanted to go to church. I'm complete atheist. No belief in God whatsoever. I wanted to go to church. And then later that day, I was with my friends and we were wondering, like, is it possible to say at the moment, look up and say, God, fuck you? That something, like, to actually do something such that you would express, I don't know, you would be saying something bad to God. And I couldn't. I am still completely atheist. I was completely atheist. I couldn't do it. I think when Silver called me that I should give a talk here, then this was the first thought that came, bridging borders. It was kind of the biggest moment of change of framework. I finally understood what does it feel to believe in God. It's almost impossible to understand it. In the same way, it's impossible to understand what does it feel if you do believe in God, what does it feel not to believe in God. You cannot change your framework of thinking about the world. But this was kind of... This moment built this bridge in a biggest divide in our society. And I was kind of maybe able to somehow understand it. A week later, I got the call that it was a usual procedure. They sent my blood samples to somewhere else and everything fine. I've got no diseases. Um, that it was a misunderstanding that uh, they, it's a, just sometimes they cannot figure it out from in one hospital, then they send it to another one. That doesn't increase your risk. It's just sometimes they cannot do it there. I didn't understand it by the, at that time. Um, yeah. But then I, now when Silver called me, that's it. First story is over. I will tell you three more stories, um, which should be related to this thing. Well, maybe not, actually not. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> then, um, at the moment, I'm uh, actually working together with Jan, who was presenting before, and we are studying brain. Um, and my background is actually in mathematics, and, and we wanted to, if you would like to explain what you do as an everyday job, it's very hard, because mathematics and computer science is hardcore. It's not something easy that you can explain in like 15 minutes. Um, we wanted to do something different, something uh, maybe crossing borders or something. Um, and we made an art project. It's about um, brain, art. We put these things on top of people. They record brain activity. Uh, EEG, electrical signals, and 
people, it was in TEDx start you, uh, and people were able to produce visual patterns and sounds with their thoughts. So they were, uh, it was very popular, loads of people were there all the time. They needed to think hard about different things, and then they were able to produce stuff, visual stuff. These were like 50,000 particles that were moving there in the field of gravity and the colors were changing and there were sounds and everything. And it came and they were controlling it with their thoughts. And um, I personally think that it was a nice way to bridge or do something interdisciplinary such that you would actually remember it and you would start asking questions. How it is possible? How can we think and then produce something on a screen. And there are many steps and then it's easy to explain what's going on there and so on. Um, and yeah, something similar. Um, my third story is about mathematics. That's what I actually do. I consider myself a mathematician. I've worked as a mathematician, studied it, using it for science, I've been teaching it, and so on. Uh, I, I'm not sure what about this joke that it's his favorite topic. I doubt it. I consider this as a way of understanding mathematics. It's as in every science we first, uh, we're trying to solve some problem, understand something. In order to do it, we are focusing somehow. We are, we are asking questions. We are trying to make it more precise. And um, the next step, step, if you have asked the right question, is to make it abstract. You know, if you want, if you do want to use natural sciences or mathematics or computer sciences or statistics or, the, or what, something else, you need to somehow abstract it. You need to leave out unnecessary things. You may have to make a simple model. You need to somehow make, turn the real world into math world such that you could use mathematics or any other abstract. Entity. Then there is calculation. You do something with the maths, you are trying to get the results. And then, as a last step, you are trying to interpret the results. You are trying to like, understand what do these results mean. Did they answer the question? Maybe because of them I can ask new questions, better questions, and I can do this step over and over again. This should be mathematics, but actually in, um, it is mathematics in our curriculum, in Estonian high school curriculum. But if we are looking at what's actually going on, I don't know how many of you actually like mathematics, probably almost none. Uh, then in our school and in our exam, we are almost only doing this. Almost, almost only, and it's such a, such a big gap between real world, or how do you think about mathematics and what is going on in the education, and it's so, so, so different. And if you are looking at the math exam, then most of the things are calculating. You've got some equations, you solve them, you've got some graph, you draw it, um, but how or why these graphs are there what questions we are answering by these graphs. If we are getting the answer, what does it mean? We don't have a single question in a high school exam and nothing, almost nothing, in, um, in everyday lessons. And something is like, there is a problem. Because actually, like, we are using these things, but actually the thing that we are teaching in school this can be done at the moment using computers. Like this is the website, Wolfram Alpha, for example. There are many others as well. This is a very um, common exercise in, um, in exam. You almost get 15 points for this. <coughs> uh, slope of a tangent line of some function at some point. If you're writing it like this to the website, we will get the answer, correct answer. Um, so in some way, or our, we are, in high school or in education, we, have, we are only doing the calculation part 
And actually, this calculation could be done by computers already. We don't need it. Um, and, and there is some gap here. And we are trying to build the bridge, if you're in this conference, to, to make these two things kind of similar or closer uh, to each other. And I'm going to talk about two uh, small projects that we are working. One of them is actually not small. First one is about um, one um, research agreement between Ministry of Education and the same company who created this Wolfram Alpha, Wolfram Research. And there they are trying to make this, um, make this work, make education like this, not just calculating. And usually we, we are trying to do it always in education that we have this math stuff and then, or any other thing, physics stuff, and then we are inserting cool stories there, or we are trying to do it. But it almost, it doesn't work for some reason. We have been trying to do it for 100 years, for 20 years, but it doesn't work. And then this project was kind of powerful or they got, they were able to give it lots of freedom and lots of resources such that we were, we were allowed to rewrite the curriculum and teaching materials and do the teacher, teacher's training. So this project was kind of a bit bigger. We were able to change everything. Curriculum, exam, teach, training of teachers, materials, absolutely everything. And the question was, how did you do it? How do you make it right from beginning if you have that power to do everything? Um, and we were, we were only allowed to do it in uh, statistics and probability theory in uh, Estonian, Estonian education. And we were trying to do it. And the way we came up was that we cannot fix the mathematics. We have to stay in real life. We have to have a narrative. We have to have a problem that we are solving. So we, were, we created the curriculum solving ourselves about 100 different problems that we thought that we would be nice to solve using statistics and computers and math and so on. So we solved about 100 problems. And some of them were too easy, some of them were too complicated, some of them didn't make sense. But at the end, we had about 20 problems. And these 20 problems made the curriculum. They, they were explained, like there was a problem, three lessons, we are trying to solve it. Problems were like, for example, are girls better at math than boys? How tall would be the tallest woman in Estonia? Should I insure my laptop? All the problems that, could, that should be somehow meaningful. And we had these problems. We wrote out 20 pages, nice report. Everything was really good. We were really proud of ourselves. It was like six people, two months full-time work. Um, and then we gave the problem to the Minister of Education, or actually it was a council of people who need to recheck whether we have done the job. And then they said that we haven't done anything. We haven't built the curriculum for mathematics. And the problem was that we didn't mention the math terms. We didn't say that now we will study this function, now we will do this. Uh, it, was, it was different. And it took us a huge amount of work to convince them that that's why we haven't done it, because we are not studying something from here. We are doing everything here. Uh, we are trying to see the big picture. And, and finally, they said that, OK, it does make some sense that, yeah, let's go on. And now, and it was nice that, that they almost said that we have to stop the project, because we haven't done anything meaningful. But now uh, it's still going on. And now we or, already finished the uh, teaching materials. And now the teachers will read them. We will fix them, and so on. And in February, we will start testing them in 30 schools in Estonia. And then we will get feedback whether it makes sense or not, this new approach for teaching mathematics. And, and why, why I'm talking about it, I think it's, I think many of presenters today have said something about looking things differently or being innovative all the time, step by step or expanding or crossing different areas. I think it's exactly this. It's, there are so many issues there. There are political issues, there are 
like philosophical issues, what are statistics, mathematics, how you do it, and it's combining so many different things, and you just cannot, you just cannot do it. You are kind of need to build it in a such a way that all the parties would agree on it, all the parties would understand it, and it's it's a long job. It takes years and years of work to build this bridge between different people and organizations and so on in order for this to work. And um, yeah. And I'm, as I said, mathematics is the thing that I do. Uh, I've got another project that I'm working on. It's kind of similar. We are trying to, or we, me with my friends, Johan and Elis, we wrote a book about mathematics. It's kind of a similar approach. We try to, we try to stay in reality. We didn't want to fix the math and then trying to kind of do something. We, we try to explain everything, what's going on behind the mathematics, not just give out the stuff. I'm, I'm just going to give an example of a circle. This is circle. It's a mathematical concept. It doesn't exist in the real world. I see loads of philosophers here. It's, it is an abstract entity. Um, and now in mathematics in high school, we define it somehow, or in university. You probably know how to define it. Uku. <laughs> define it. <laughs> Equal distance from the center. Very good, exactly. This is the definition. Um, uh, it's in Estonian because it's copied from the book. It's equal distance from the center. So we, we define it like this. There is center and all the points, and that's it. But, and, and in, in mathematics, or I think in always in education, it seems that this is the way forward. This is the way how to do it, even with the most simple thing like circle. But actually, it isn't. It turns out that you can define it in very many different ways. And this would be maybe the second box of abstracting. You don't have to define it like this. How else could you define it? It doesn't actually make sense. Look, it's complicated. Uh, normally, you would define it, I don't know, what would you say? It's round, nice, and simple. Uh, all these words, actually, they can be used to define it mathematically as well. For example, circle is the most symmetrical. Wherever you draw a line, you will get the same object. How, however you turn it around, you will get the same object. So if you define it as an object with, which is most symmetrical, this is a correct definition. It's as good as the previous one. And actually, we can invent this ourselves. We could like, uh, define it ourselves. Um, what else? It's, I said it's kind of most basic or simple. Um, if we would have a, like a rope and we would like to get, put, put the rope on a table and we would like to get the, the like, biggest or largest area using that rope, then we would get the circle. So it's the maximum area for a given uh, perimeter for a given rope. And it's, it's again, definition of a circle. Um, and in high oh, and in physics, people would define it differently. They would say that um, if this would be a planet, then this would be a satellite. And if this uh, speed and um, acceleration would be equal, then this would be a perfect circle. In physics, they actually do define circle as an object using these properties. And if I went to study mathematics in high school, we define it differently. It's a bit more, well, I'm going to see it now, it's not there. Uh, and, and it's even different. So we didn't use none of these four. But actually, they're all equivalent. You can like prove that they're the same. You can discuss them. You can compare them. You can use them on different times, because sometimes one is more useful than another. This is from the book that we are writing. We are trying to show that actually the same all high school things that we are studying, they are, it's not that simple. It's even, 
in some way not that simple, but in some way it's, it is simple. All these objects themselves come from somewhere and then we are also trying to explain how we are using them, why do we need different definitions, how we are, why do we solve these circle equations in real life, what problems they help to solve, how they were created historically. There are so many like background information that actually this math is kind of connected to everything that we do. Um, and we are trying to explain it. But this is, was, is not why I'm talking it here. So we wrote the book, but we did it in a different way. We approached it differently, but, but there were two things that are strange in giving out the book. So we wanted to publish the book. It was extremely complicated. Uh, we couldn't get an agreement with publishers. They weren't interested in it for, for different reasons. Um, and then I think as a first book in Estonia, as a, like a proper book, we got the ma ma funding from Hoa India. It's a crowdsource um, funding platform that all the people give out small amounts. And uh, it was extremely successful. So, but, but it's, it's really strange. Can you imagine that you are a publisher? You know that you would like to, if someone needs to publish a book, he, needs, he or she needs to get to you and you, you will help him or her. But now, as the first time, there was something different. The money, they got the money, this, we got the money from ram, randomly, from the air, from nobody. From, we didn't like, know these people. It was just a, in some way magic. And they were, they were confused. They were, uh, yeah, they were confused. But after that moment, they, lots of them called us. They wanted to do business then. Uh, <laughs> and they were really interested in it, like, and, and they called us. And then it, we were able to continue our, our pursuit of doing something differently, of like doing something strange in their world, to destroy their comfortable borders of how they do business. And then the next step that we did was that we published it in a, using CC license, which means that for them it was again a very strange thing to do, we said that this book will be published as a CC license, which means that uh, absolutely everyone can take the book, change the, change the book, distribute it, uh, and they can get it free uh, from the internet as well. In some sense, we are giving out all the rights for the content. And um, again, uh, it should be the first case in Estonia. And now these two things together for this huge business of publishing, it really distorts or destroys their way of behaving uh, in the world and they have to reconsider many things. Um, and I would like to finish up saying that it's, it should be somehow breaching the borders, but, but as, I, as I think about it now, it's more destroying the borders. But in a, in a way, you could think about it as the same thing. Making a bridge over border or destroying the border is the same thing. But we are doing something to distort the system. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian. Are there any questions? Would anyone like to ask a question? Yes. Um, what's the next uh, big breakthrough you're working on right now? In what? In which area? Um, I don't <laughs> Maybe know you can skip the first one out of these four, but. <laughs> no, I just mean like, uh, what's the next uh, area of business you wanna <coughs> stir? Area of business. <laughs> uh, I think it's kind of complicated. Do you, would you like to get an answer about what I think that is the next thing in the world or what I personally will do? Or like what kind of idea you have in the back of your mind you want to do? 
I would like to do. <laughs> it's, uh, there are very different things. Um, I would like to do, like this book, I think if we started writing it, there were no, nothing similar in the world, in any of the main languages, like Russian, English, and uh, German, and French, and we, call, and we asked it from many, many places, and it seems that no one has tried to uh, give a meaning to your high school curriculum. <laughs> um, so I would maybe like to do this, but I think you didn't. You weren't hoping to get this answer. Yesterday, ah oh no, it's a long story. I think I cannot answer this. <laughs> okay. So this was the plan to do it in the world, the same book with the same same mechanism, using the Kickstarter, uh, using the CC license stuff, and uh, maybe doing it uh, worldwide, the same stuff. Are there any other questions? Okay, Christian. Well, I could answer oh. for the brain stuff as well. Yes. The, what we did in TEDx uh, taught you this brain, controlling the brain, doing art. I think there the next step is that we would like to... Uh, it's a bit more advanced, it takes us a year or two, um, that we would like to record the brain waves such that the people would be able to control the uh, football robot. And I would like to get a match between two people controlling football robots and playing football using their thought only. I think this would be the next step for the art project. Mm -hmm. But it needs at least two bachelor students and one master student to work on it. <laughs> and for the first talk, I hope that there will be no next project there. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Could you give a fun example of a fun statistical uh, problem solved? I think the very, very first problem that uh, they will start doing it in seventh grade, they're trying to answer a question, am I normal? What? Am I normal? And this is the very, very first lesson. And why it was this? We wanted to... They all can insert their data, like their height, their weight, and so on. Then all the data will go to the uh, student teacher's uh, laptop, and you can see all the data. And then you can see that you've got the data. You can feel that you are the data point, that there is a connection between the data and the graphs to the real world. It's in your classroom, and so on. And then if you start asking this question, then it turns out that this question doesn't make much sense that uh, you're trying to answer a question, am I normal? But it, then you have to start defining, you have to be more precise with your, with your question, what does it mean to be normal? Uh, and if you use different features, you get different answers. If you use different definitions for normal, you get different answers. And I think we, we are concluding that we can write the sentence for every person make these kinds of definitions such that he or she will be normal or he or she will be not normal. So we could do anything with statistics. But we are trying to teach that they are the data points there, that it's not invented thing, that they can control them and they invented the data and so on. So you can prove anything with statistics? <laughs> kind of, yeah. But you have to be more precise and very careful what you are asking and so on. And you have to define them more precisely. Since the mic is here, um, that audiovisual thing with the EEG, yeah. uh, I realized that was just a proxy, but that was cool. Do you still display that at some times, and is there any way to get in on that? Uh, yes, we do. Um, I'm organizing a party <laughs> <laughs> soon, in like a month's time, uh, uh, and uh, we will, it will be open there. But it is a party, party not a conference. But I think uh, you can come. I, I. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks. But we will definitely do it in uh, what's the <coughs> event in Tallinn where all the high school kids come together to choose the yeah. university. Tevit. We are doing it in Tevit. So people can uh, try this on. They can use their thoughts to control something. And then we can discuss 
like math stats and computer science behind it, how we are actually doing it. Yeah, that should be a hit. Okay, Christian, thank you very much.